What's up guys, Charles Maba here with another question and answer session from someone on Instagram. I've been having a hell of a time with these videos, keeping up because they're coming in so fast. And then my camera keeps, uh, I had this bunk battery in there apparently, it kept dying halfway through the video so I have to redo it again and then it reset my camera. Oh, it's a whole ordeal, but uh, it's fine, it's fine, we're back. I've got this, new batteries in and whatnot, and uh, shout out to the Lady Generals. I don't know exactly who the Lady Generals are, but apparently they were a softball team, and I found the shirt at Goodwill, and I have it now. So, shout out to you guys. I don't know anything about you, but congratulations on something. I don't know. Alright, let's get into this. So, this question, this is a two-part question. Apparently I answered it before to this person, but I figured I may as well answer it to everyone right now. And then I will get into the second part question, which they just sent me uh, a second ago. This is from Flying Squirrel, uh, F L Y N N Squirrel, on Instagram. And the first question was Love you, man. Your dreadlock vids are so helpful. I got my dreads in mid June, and lately I feel they've only just started to properly mature. I was wondering how do you sleep with them as I feel a hair wrap puts tension on my scalp? Thank you. Uh, so how, how do I do it? Well, I'll tell you how I sleep. It's very simple, actually. I scoot down further on my bed, and this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, luckily, I have a big bed, but I scoot down further on my bed, and I put my dreads above my head, like this, when I sleep. Um, because there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night with something like this, or like this on your face, and you're just like, oh, God, what's going on? Um, or choking yourself out in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> But even if one dread, if, I, if I'm sleeping on one dreads on my face, it just it, it drives me nuts. So I keep all of my dreads pulled above my head. I've never slept with a wrap on my head or anything along those lines. I just always, have always just flip my dreads above my head at the end of the night. Sometimes I flip them over a little bit, and then my wife yells at me for hitting her in the face with my dreads. Uh, but she loves them, so she has to deal with it. Uh, but yeah, no, I just take my dreads and I flip them above my head. And keep them above my head. That's that's the only way to sleep with dreads. I think even if you have short dreads, you know, because if they're like this long, like short, like this, even still, like you're gonna, it's gonna be in your face and roll over, and you have like an indentation of your dreadlocks in your face. Just push them above your head a little bit, like that, and let them sit above your head. I find that's the best way to sleep with dreadlocks. Uh, I know some people have said I talked to a guy who was, he was sleeping with dreads. How was he sleeping with them? In some kind of wrap, silk wrap or something, because he didn't want him to get nappy or something along those lines, but. I've never had an issue with that. I just put my dreads above my head, leave them alone, let them be. That's it. That's it. Put them above your head, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, pull them back down. I don't really have any issues. Even when I flip around, they kind of just they stay above my head. Uh, so that was part one. Part two from Flying Squirrel, which just came in, says, and I, so they sent me a picture of their dreadlock, and I will post it on the video so you can see what I'm talking about as well. Hiya, another question. For the whole time I've had my dreads, about four months, whenever I try and dread the ends and crochet them in, they always fall out. I have no idea what to do as whatever I try doesn't work. May I ask how you originally started with your dreads and how do you keep them tidy and less frizzy? Um, so how I started my dreads was, it was back coming method. So the whole crocheting thing, I just don't get and I understand. I don't know why anybody would do it. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, I feel like with backcombing, backcombing automatically creates a much tighter, neater dread. Uh, and so I asked this person, I said, hey, you know, how did you start your dreads? Twist and rip. And I think that's just like the worst method to start dreadlocks. And once again, that's a personal preference, so please don't yell at me. But I think that twist and rip, just you can't get a nice, cylindrical, clean, tight dreadlock. It just, it just, it just not, I've not seen anyone do it where... I would be like, oh, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But no, I haven't seen it because I feel like it comes out a little bit messy and it doesn't come out as tidy and there's like usually bumps and like just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I feel like backcombing is the only way to start dreadlocks, to have good dreadlocks right off the bat. How did I start my dreadlocks? Backcombing. I took a flea comb and I backcombed it up, rubber banded it, done. Um, how do I manage frizziness and keep them clean and tidy? Hat method, rubber bands, palm rolling. That's it. Nothing else, nothing more. Very minimalist uh, approach to dreadlocks. Because I don't want to do a whole lot of work, basically. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm lazy dreads. But, uh, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about there. Um, a little, little shout out there, kind of. 
But uh, no, I'm just, I just, I don't want to do a whole lot of work to my dreads, so I just do the mo least amount of work to get the most amount out of it. So I feel like with rubber banding, it lasts longer and the roots hold tighter. You get a more cylindrical dread, and they come out kind of like this, where they just, you know, over years and years and years. And this is like years of, of growth here, and it just stays cylindrical, and it grows out kind of like that. And you just do the root boop, 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 with the hat, and it. Stays so nice and tight. So that's how I keep them tight and clean and frizz free and whatnot. Also, sleeping with your dreads above your head, I feel like, prevents you from like rolling around a lot and like getting all frizzy and nodding up and whatnot or whatever else issues you're having. Just throw them above your head, go to sleep. So I'm looking at this this dread here, right? I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, so crochet method doesn't work for you. I don't really like crochet, so I would say stop doing the crochet method. But what I would say is, so I'm assuming that where your fingers are. From there down is the loose part you're talking about. And then I'm guessing from where your fingers are from above that, which I can't see in the photo, is that that's dreaded, I'm assuming, right? I'm guessing. So what can you do for that very end part right there? Like, so I, I mean, I would say rubber band and trim off the frizzy end, but that's a lot to your dreaded trim off. Let's say about an inch, maybe an inch and a half trim off. So here's what I'm saying. I say take a flea comb for pets and try to back comb that part of the dreadlock you have right there. You're gonna, you're, it's gonna shorten up a little bit, but it's gonna knot up as well. And just keep working it in, working it in, back combing, back combing, back combing, work it in, work it in, pull down tight, back comb, back comb, pull down tight, and get it to tighten up and back and knot up as much as possible to the rest of the dreadlock. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice here talking so much. Jeez. Um, and then after that's done, rubber band it right around the dread where the part where it's actually knotted up. Rubber band that a little bit too to keep it nice and tight and hold it together. And then at the end you're still gonna have some frayed ends and a little bit of like wispiness hanging off. So what I want you to do there is a rubber band that end of the tip as well, right where the, the knot ends there or where it's knotted up, rubber band that end of the tip. Cut off the frizzy part because the frizzy part at this point is useless. Unless you like frizziness in which case keep it. But you're asking me to how to keep it tighter or make it look cleaner, so that's what I would do. I would rubber band it up, rubber band it as tight as you want, because this part of your hair, anything down here, it's dead hair. Like with your roots, <laughs> it's a pointer. With your roots up here, you don't want to tighten your, you don't want to tighten the rubber band that tight because you could pull your roots out, you could damage the scalp. You don't want to do that. But with this part down here, you can rubber band it as much as you want. It's not, it's dead hair. Once it grows out of your scalp, it's dead. And there's nothing that's going to hurt this. So you can rubber band this tip as much as you want and just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going so it's super, super tight. Whatever's left around the end, just cut it right off and leave the rubber band there. Let it just sit there. Uh, eventually, it'll, it'll stretch out or fall out or become loose enough where you can just kind of pull it barely and it just falls apart. Um, that's when you know it's done. And when that happens, the, that part of the dread should be nice and tight. And then everything else shouldn't unravel at that point. It shouldn't like be like crocheting where it's coming undone on you. It should be knotted and tight and it'll stay that way and not come undone. And then if you're still having some loose spots like right here in that spot, if there's still like some spots that didn't tighten up as enough, rubber band those as well. Rubber band maybe three spots. One, two, and then th one in the middle. Right there's your three. And then what's going to happen is do the same thing. Let it sit there for as long as it needs to stay in until it falls out. And what you're going to notice is those spots are going to be a little more of an indentation. And they're going to be look, they're going to be like tighter and more indented than the spots that don't have rubber bands on them. So then you take a rubber band and you rubber band the spots that are, are not indented and tighten those up really tight and let do the same thing all over again. Eventually those will fall out and then the whole thing will be nice and tight and solid. Eventually over time the indentations will come out. They'll like the dread will kind of puff up on its own eventually, but it'll stay knotted. So as you can see, like in these, these are not these had rubber bands in them, there were some indentations, but you can't see anything now. It's just like a perfect uh, dreadlock. Perfectly cylindrical, perfectly tight. No issue there. So Flying Squirrel, I hope that answers your question. Um, if you have any more questions, if any of you have questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram, and uh, I will answer your questions. Also, there is a contest still going on. The contest is going to go on until December for my birthday where I can give a gift to you guys instead of giving a gift to myself. Uh, I will help somebody with one-on-one -on -one questions and answers for your dreadlocks live through Skype or FaceTime or whatever means you choose. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, go to my Instagram feed, follow, comment on a 
photo, not send me a message, comment on a photo. I found you on YouTube. I will then follow you back and you have to follow me as well, obviously, like I said. Um, and then I'll enter you in the contest and then I'll pick somebody and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one kind of talk about dreadlocks or whatever you want, really. I don't care. If you want to talk about something else, feel free. Let's do that. But, um, for the Dread Talks, so I can help you out. Um, also, I'm thinking about doing a website of just dreadlocks. I have a photography website already, but I'm thinking about doing a website just for dreads to make it easier for people to find the questions they're looking for answers to and whatever else. And then that way it kind of makes it easier for everyone. If that's something you think you would like me to do, please let me know in the comments down below and we can do that as well. Um, thank you, thank you again for all of the comments and questions. I do really appreciate it. It's blown my mind that people in Australia and England and Canary Islands and all around the world are sending me questions now and watching my videos. It's just like mind boggling to me, but that's those interwebs, I guess, you know? Um, but yeah, thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for all the comments and questions. It's just, it's, it's humbling and amazing and awesome and cool. And I'm glad that after 18 and a half years of having dreadlocks that I'm able to help other people out and to grow dreads the same as mine, or longer, or cooler, or better, because at some point, I might not have dreadlocks anymore, you know? So let's get these questions and answers in, where I can help everybody while I can, and it's amazing, I love you guys, you're awesome, uh, thank you so much, and please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos later. Bye.